Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We didn't see many people paving their own ways like we decided to, so we created this podcast to talk to others who were brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we learn from them, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less traveled. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. everybody and welcome back to the coast podcast my name is emily given and i own a virtual assistant agency out of linwood washington and i'm whitney popa i own a communications consultancy in Edmonds that i run out of my house and partially out of this glorious place where i'm sitting in the booth right now workhorse hq which is around the corner from our friend who's with us today mackenzie's eyelash and permanent makeup bar called Mac Lash, but that's not all Mackenzie is. That's actually only a tiny little portion of Mackenzie's life. She is actually this like amazing, brilliant, contagious trainer and now Instagram influencer who is like so beautifully niche in how she coaches people on lashes and is expanding into even more of mindset coaching helping women really get out of their own ways regardless of what their business is but also very specifically within lashes and she and I have recently become really good buddies and have a weekly walk date with our friend Sam, who you've listened to before, Human Aligned. And we're just so happy to have her. She was actually a recommendation from Connor at Cottage Bakery, which is an awesome little place right between Edmonds and Linwood. And um, so everybody here is just becoming so connected and I just love to see it. So welcome, Mackenzie. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so stoked to be here and I'm glad we're friends in real life now. Oh my God. And it like started, I think, while we were asking you to date us on the podcast or like from Connor (laughs) mentioning you. And then I was like, oh, she's so cool. Like, I wonder if she would be our friend. And then now you are. So it's great. Well, it's so funny because I thought the same thing about you guys. I was like, they are so cool and they have a podcast. And I started listening to you guys immediately when Connor like tagged me in your post. And I was like, wait, I want more like fun entrepreneur, businesswoman, like badass friends. I'm like, I need to work my way into this. And so when you asked me to go on the walk, I was like, wait, yes. Did I just like manifest this? Did this just like the universe just popped you guys into my lap and I just love it. And I'm so glad we're connected. That's so good. Like, that's the whole reason we started this podcast. (laughs) That's so, that's really great to uh, hear that it's doing what we intended it to do. I love that. Yeah. And I felt the same about the dropping and manifesting. So I'm glad we're on the same page about that. And we also go to the same hair person. It's just like a crazy, crazy connection. And my kids are going to the school that Mackenzie went to. And I had a whole mind block around that, that she helped me work through. Um, but what I was most fascinated about and what I've tried to avoid asking you about this whole time is basically the trajectory of your business. And Emily always asks like the smart, like foundational questions, (laughs) but like what we see now, like when people land on your Instagram, they're like, look at this person who has like an awesome, very engaged following. She's making all these super cute reels. Like we want her to be our best friend because that's like the vibe that you put out and you're just like so warm and contagious even through a screen, which is hard to do. Um, But like I just sit there and look at those videos and wonder how did she get there? Like how did she decide like I'm going to be a lash artist? That's one thing. But then to coach people and create this presence where you're such a support and in like what seems to me like a very for you role of like 
not rising above the work, but like helping others get there. Like, how did you go from lash to coach? Well, <laughs> I'm pretty long winded with my answers. So bear with me. Yeah. I feel like, so to like rewind when I started, I dropped out of college. I had my own limiting beliefs and like pressures that I put on myself of thinking that I wasn't good enough because I didn't go to college and I just did lashes and it wasn't that great of, you know, a career choice or something that was going to build me the life that I wanted. And so when I started to really start listening to podcasts and reading books around mindset, I struggled really bad with anxiety. I was having daily panic attacks. I was having, like, I didn't want to leave my house. I had so many days where I was just so fearful to do anything. And I had to get out of that mindset. I was like, I literally, this is not a life I want to live. I cannot, I'm struggling so much. And the moment I started to realize, I, I can't remember who shared, someone said something about having a panic attack. And I was like, wait, I'm not the only person that has these panic attacks. And is like, so fearful to do anything or take any action because I'm so worried about making the wrong decision or I'm so worried about failing. And when I started to get out of my own way and read these books and think about why I was feeling the way I was feeling, why I was struggling with all these things I was struggling with, I started to realize I wasn't the only person. And I realized I did have a really awesome support group and family system that I could go to and talk to about the struggles that I was having and the anxiety that I was having. And they had my back and they were like, hey, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And so that one book really shifted my mindset and it's called the The power of positive imaging by Norman Vincent Peale. It's a really old book. It's kind of a dry read. There were a couple times I fell asleep reading it, but it really started to help me realize I have to look at these things completely differently. If I ever want to get to the point that I want to get to. And I started connecting with other business owners and one gal who I went to get my nails done in specific, she had shared with me that she had kind of a tough upbringing. No one believed in her. And she really like had to pull herself through her business and support herself and be like, you know what? I don't care what you guys think about me. Like I'm going to do what I want to do because this is something I want to achieve. And I want to help other women feel confident and beautiful by doing their nails. And like, that's my goal. And so for me, I had to remove myself out of the situation and be like, okay, I cannot care what these other people are thinking of me because if what I'm sharing or what I'm doing or the energy that I'm trying to throw through your screen to help even just bring somebody out of an anxiety, something, attack, or give them that little bit of inspiration for something, like if I'm helping one person, then I cannot care about what anyone else is thinking. And so for me, I started to think about what value can I bring rather than, are these people going to think I look stupid? Like, are these people going to think that I'm insane for doing just lashes and now making it into something that really does help other women feel confident? Because it started for me where I wanted to help women feel confident and beautiful by doing their lashes, where they could wake up, they could save time in the morning, they could feel like just that little bit of extra confidence. And then I was able to take that core value of mine into something so much bigger and now helping other women start their own businesses or grow their own businesses or be the person that I'm trying to be for an audience for other people to do that within their own niche. And once I started to make those mindset shifts, I feel like that's really where I started to gain that momentum of like, I don't matter, (laughs) but what I'm sharing has real value and how, what I can do and what I can share to bring value to other people is what was really important to me. And now it's easy, (laughs) but it wasn't always easy. And I feel like, so like you said, you know, when people land on my page now, so many people look at it like, oh, she's always been this way. She's always been confident. I was so shy. I was so afraid to make mistakes and fail. And now I look at things so differently because I'm like, okay, 
if I go try this thing and I fail, if it doesn't work out, I can learn something from it and I can grow from it and then I can make better mistakes forward. And so I guess for me, just really kind of doing the inner work of what my mindset, what you're thinking going on in your head is what you're going to, what your life is going to become. And so that was really big for me to change that (laughs) because I wasn't happy with what my life looked like because inside my head was a nightmare and I don't want anyone else to feel that way. And so that was another big driving force for me to start opening up and being vulnerable about having anxiety and dealing with that. And I should probably be a little bit more vulnerable (laughs) because I haven't shared anything like that in a while, but I think it's so important to just work on your mindset and how you look at things. And that's really just what helped me. My heart is like swelling right now. Like I just can't, like, I feel like you're speaking directly to me right now. I have such a big fear of showing up and being seen and doing something wrong. And I consider myself like, what do you call it, Whitney? An extroverted introvert? Um, Yeah. On the spectrum of extroversion yeah so yeah I that's pretty amazing that you just said that because it's everything that I think in my actual head but it's like so affirming to have somebody else say it and it really helped you and look look at you now and like you said it's an exercise too like that's what people have to remember just like any muscle like you have to flex it and you have to every day like I mean, I was just joking with Sam and Mackenzie earlier this week about, like, everywhere I've touched lately, I've been hearing about EFT, which Noemi brought up with us um, because that's, like, the focus of her business on this podcast. She talked about it, and it's an emotional freedom technique, like, tapping to get through anxiety. I have crazy anxiety, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of it in the same way that I am now. I would just like get spun up about something and then, um, not, I, w- I wouldn't notice it in the same way. So I would just go through my little storms instead of being like, what is this about? How can I help myself? How can I calm down that little inner Whitney who's screaming and afraid, doesn't feel safe for whatever reason? What is this igniting in me? And the, the tapping was so helpful because I just, um, was like telling them how I went out to coffee and then I came back and I was like, oh my God, I talk too much because I have the same thing. Like you said, Mackenzie, I'm long winded. I just decided yesterday that I'm going to stop like uh, trying to manage other people's experiences around my long windedness. Like, so I'm long winded. I just, I talk, but I've been conditioned my whole life when what I realized through my recent tapping experience is that I think I'm too much. Because I've been told in so many ways. And I just saw on Instagram this morning a friend that I follow. She had something on her Instagram about to all the little girls whose teachers wrote that they talk too much. Thank you for being leaders. And I was like, look at that. Like, that was a too much when you're five. So every little touch point that we absorb along the way, like, of course, it's going to give us anxiety. Of course, we're going to be afraid to show up because we've been taught that it's wrong, that you doing that is too much or, you know, everybody has their own experiences. But I just realized for myself, too, of like, dang, that's like a core belief that I have of like, I'm carrying anxiety from having like an awesome two hour conversation with somebody all day because I'm afraid that in one way or another, I was too much. Like my existence is taking up too much space and it's affecting somebody else. Who knows what that person's experience was? I think it was positive because we're still buddies, but like that's all about me. And so to watch you every day, I'm doing it too, where I'm like, I'm just going to put out this reel now that I have access to reels. I still hate them. Um, And show up, whether I have a wedgie when I'm playing basketball or not, because I have a little story to tell. And so I'm so glad to see you do that and elevate. And I feel like in parallel, you were doing that. And then you're like, let me hire a bunch of people to do my work so that I can just focus on helping other women start their lash career. So I want to hear more about that. So you have a lash company so it's not just you you have lots of employees 
Mm -hmm. So we have a salon downtown Edmonds and we have seven lash artists. And then I also have my assistant who's been with me for a little over a year now. And she actually is learning permanent makeup as well. And she's going to kind of transition into that artist title. So it was a big shift when I decided I wanted to hire employees. First of all, because I was terrified to pass off my clientele because that had been my biggest source of income for four years, five years. And so I was terrified to pass that off. And secondly, I have always been someone that is like, no one can do it better than me. It has to be done by me. And really when I started to realize, okay, if I want to grow this business, my multiple businesses into something greater than myself, something bigger, I have to let go and I have to do the things that I'm the only one that can do it. So (laughs) when I first moved into the space, I was vacuuming, I was cleaning everything and I was like, okay, I really need to step aside because anyone can vacuum. Even though I think I'm the best at vacuuming the space, it's not something that is worth my time anymore. And I look at those things where, okay, what? how can I free up my time? Because that was one of the biggest things for me is I want to have the freedom to do the things that light me on fire. And if I'm sitting taking clients all day because I'm worried that stepping away from that income temporarily to focus on something that lights me up and that I can create bigger income from and more resources for my team because of the income that that can bring in, then I need to focus on the things that I'm the only one that's good at. And so it was really scary, (laughs) but before we got into the commercial space, I hired two employees on and then a third And we had two beds in there. We were shuffling everything around. And so it did really help when we got into our commercial space because we have six beds now. And with the eight girls, we kind of alternate. And a couple girls have other um, jobs that they work full-time at. So they're part-time here. So it is really good to kind of have that flexibility as well. And I just wanted to create a really fun space that everyone was excited to come to. Everyone felt like it was positive because I don't know about you guys, but we all pick up on energy and some people don't even recognize it, but there's been businesses that I've walked into that I'm like, whoa, something is off here. I don't know if there's tension between employees or what's going on, but, and that's something I really pride myself on here because we all genuinely love each other and we genuinely want everyone to do well and feel fulfilled in this job and be creative and have this positive space to come to. And so that has really helped me kind of skyrocket the other avenues in my business because now they're to a point where they're all completely self-sufficient. And it's so funny because I'll come in here and I'll say, do you guys need anything? Do you want me to get you anything? Like, and they're like, no, we're good. I'm like, you guys really just don't need me anymore. So there will be times that I can not show up for three days and I know that everything's still running smoothly and everyone's happy and if they need me, they'll text me. And that was, you know, really exciting for me because I listened to a podcast that said, you know, your business should be able to run in a way that you can take a four week vacation and not receive one phone call. And that was a huge wake up call for me. I was like, okay, I need to, I need to start passing off these tasks. So my business can run that way. Because maybe one day I would like to take a four-week vacation and not touch work at all. So that was really huge for me to create a space that everyone was excited to come to and felt uplifted and loved. And you guys just celebrated your one-year anniversary, right, in this space? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. It was so much fun. We went out to dinner. I came in, and they totally surprised me. Everything was decorated. There were balloons everywhere. There were signs. And they actually all pitched in and bought me a neon sign that says Lash Mob. And so it came, and we put it up on the wall. And I just think it's the coolest thing that they were just as excited to celebrate our one year as I was. Yeah. That's they've been so a part sweet. of it. How long have you been like how long has your journey been so far in March 2022? For reference. So <laughs> 
So I started doing lashes in 2014. I dropped out of college. I like took a month off and then I decided I wanted to go to beauty school and lashes totally fell into my lap. It was not something that I thought I wanted to do at all. When I was in beauty school, I was getting my lashes done and the gal who was doing mine was like, you should like get me the hookup to come into your school and teach everyone. So I was like, okay, sure. Why not? She's like, if you get X amount of people to sign up, you can take the class for free. So I was like, sweet. Like I'm down. So I'm like hyping everyone. Like we all need to learn lashes. Like it's the new thing. Like nobody's doing them yet. Like we need to get in on the ground floor. Like we're going to make so much money. And so I got 24 people to sign up and we took, I, I believe it was just a one day course. And I, things have kind of come easily to me is in the realm of like sports or like making friends and things like that. So I thought, oh, what's one more thing? Like this is going to be so easy. And it was the most frustrating thing I had ever attempted. I think I got 10 lashes on my model. And when her eyes were closed, I was like, oh, these kind of look nice. And she opened her eyes. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like it literally doesn't look like I did anything. And you just laid down for like (laughs) three and a half hours. I was like, I am so sorry. And so it really, it just fell into my lap and I worked for a salon for a year and then a couple people quit to do their own thing. And I was 20 years old and I was like, maybe I should do my own thing. I was like, why not? And luckily, you know, I was living at home with my parents still and I didn't have a whole lot to worry about. My car was paid for. I just had to do my phone bill and my car insurance. And I was like, okay, that's so easy. Like that's doable. I can do that. And it just kind of blew up from there. And I think it helped me that I was one of the only lash artists in the area in 2015, 2016, when I did go out on my own, that anyone who wanted them just was like, oh, I know this one person who does them. And I just really got lucky with word of mouth. And that's kind of when I just started posting on Instagram. I had no strategy. I was just posting lash photo after lash photo. And then when I started to realize like, oh, people want to see who the artist is. (laughs) Like I had a client come. So I had been in one, two, three, I was in my fourth space and I have always just been in a, like a sweet style space. A client came up and she looked through my little glass door and she was like, are you Mackenzie? Like, am I in the right place? And I had been in business for four years and she had no idea what I looked like and she had no idea what my salon space looked like. And that was a huge light bulb moment for me to realize like, oh, like these people are trusting me with their face and their eyeballs and they're coming to my space and their eyes are going to be closed for three hours I need to give them a little bit of who I am and like share my personality. And so I started doing that and I started taking a step back more and just really focusing on trainings. And then reels came out and I was like, all right, let's go. (laughs) Like I have time to like do this fun stuff. And I just had some fun, like relatable ideas and they just took off in those five second, seven second reels. And then that's when I just fell in love with it. And so that's kind of how, obviously, a lot of ups and downs along the way, but that's kind of how I got to where I am now. It's like, I love it. It's just like the perfect storm of like right place, right time, but like following your intuition too, which I think is so important. And it's funny now because like anybody... I don't know where our listeners live. Honestly, I don't even know how many listeners we have. My mom, she texted me this morning that she already listened to Richard's episode last night. So I know my mom listens. But as far as other listeners, I would think a lot of them live around this area. And you can walk around Edmonds and point to at least, it's a small downtown core. There's at least like three places. It's like churches in my grandparents' town, like more bars and churches than anything else more lash places now and I love your attitude of like enough for everyone too because there really is Mm -hmm. and I feel like I've always looked at it that way and I think that was something like my mom instilled in me so much and just being around other female entrepreneurs one gal said like I said something about 
the lash industry becoming oversaturated? And she was like, no, <laughs> like absolutely not. And the more books I started to dive into, the more I realized, think about how many hairdressers there are. My sister is currently in school to become a hairdresser. If she looked at it like, well, there's already so many hairdressers, I can't do this. And I think that's why it's so important to have your face in the front of your business and share your personality because you're going to attract the people who want to work with you and your service is the bonus. And when I started looking at it like that, I started to think more about how many women are coming into my place of business to be trained to go start their own business. And I'm a huge advocate now to put your face on everything because they had I had that experience with that client who didn't know what I looked like and frankly had no idea who I was, what I was about and I've had a couple clients and students be like, I just felt like I had like a Tony Robbins class, <laughs> like spending an hour with you or two days in your training. And that's also something I'm still working on sharing on my page because it, again, will just attract those people to you. And there is enough for everyone. There's room for everyone at the top. And I know Whitney, you and I have talked about this a little bit as far as money goes. Think about how much money is circulating. There are some people who literally would never be able to spend the amount of money that they have. Like there's just no way for them to go through all of that. And how much is in circulation and being able to be like, there is literally more than enough for everyone. And I I talk to my girls this way too, all the lash artists in my shop, all of us could produce the same exact work. But one client might be like, I like her the best because we have the best conversation or we talk about other things. Or someone might just be like, you know what? She doesn't talk to me and I like to sleep during my appointment. And that's what is going to set you apart. And of course, like you can specialize in certain styles, you can specialize in certain things, but it's the connection that keep people coming back to you. And that's what's so important. That's what I always say to my coaching clients too. I always say, nobody's you. And that's your, that's what makes you special. And the the people that want to work with you are going to be attracted to you. So let that light shine. That's what I always tell people too. So I think it makes a lot of sense. You're like, Whitney always talks about magnetism and, um, like drawing in the people to you that you're you're putting that energy out and they're feeling your energy and they're being attracted to you and I think there's so much truth in that. And I think it also helps the more you put yourself out there and share like your personality or what you like or who you are, not only does it attract the people that you want in, but it repels the people who are not going to vibe with you. And I think that helped me a lot because I was, people could look at my work and they were attracted to me and they would come in, but like, we really didn't vibe. And like, they were always happy with the work, but there was always something that was just kind of like, it just didn't feel like a fit and that's okay. And like, I used to take that really personally too. And again, just removing myself and my feelings from the situation and being like, uh, I heard this thing on a podcast the other day. It said, um, you know, rejection is protection. And I was like, Ooh, I love that. And you need to start looking at things like that because you want to, if you're doing it right, you're going to be attracting people and you're also going to be repelling people. And that's what you should be going for. And if that means being your crazy self or your super excited, like high energy, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're really chill and low energy. You're going to attract the people who want that specific thing. You're right for a specific group, a specific audience, but it's not going to be every audience and that's okay. And that's what you want. Yeah, I had an awesome conversation with my therapist like two weeks ago about this because I was, and I mentioned this, I think to both of you, at least to you, Mackenzie, about how I was having this like weird client project experience where it just like wasn't immediately like, yes, I love it. You're amazing. And then I can just like send the invoice and move on and be like, yes, I am amazing. Like I was very in an external validation mode and confused about why this client didn't love everything that I did immediately, or at least give me a compliment sandwich. And she was like, 
you have, think of it this way. You have a gift. Like, think of it as, like, a physical gift so that it helps you in your mind. Like, you're going to Christmas and you're handing out your gift to every single person in your family. And you're looking at their faces and hoping that they're all going to love this gift that is so much a part of you that you're giving them with everything that you are. And do you think that every single one of those people is going to respond the same way to this gift that you're giving them? You can't expect that every single person is going to feel the way that you feel about giving it to them or absorb the magic that you're putting into it in the way that you intend to. You can't get that back from them or manage their experience around it. You can just do your best and say, this is my gift and be good with that and move on versus trying to manage their experience of it or hoping that they love it as much as you do and that it will reflect poorly. Like you have to keep that in your body of like, I love this gift and I love giving it to you. And what happens after that is irrelevant to like my worthiness, my feelings of who I am. So that visual of like giving the gifts and especially thinking of my family, that's like, you know, they're so different than I am. I was like, okay, got it. (laughs) I love that so much. It makes me think about in terms of like, I look at that, like, I think I related to social media, weirdly enough, but thinking about the value that you're giving and like, you have to give that gift. You have to give your magic with no expectations because if you're giving your gift and you're giving your magic on the expectation of like, Oh, well, I'm going to post this amazing piece of content or I'm going to like slide into this girl's DMS and help her. Or if she's asking me a question and give my gift, but then I expect something in return. It's never going to, it's never, ever, ever going to be what you, your expectations are. And so for me, I feel like I'm such a high expectation person because that's what I expect of myself. And I had to get rid of that completely. Exactly. Like you said, you're going to give your gift to every single family member and they're all going to react differently. And I feel like going into things with no expectations and just like specifically with me, when I think of creating a course marketing it and then selling it. If I have these, well, I want to hit this number and I want to hit this. And if I have these expectations on it and I don't reach that, it's a big letdown. I could still have an amazing launch, but if it's not those numbers, it might be, you know, a little internal struggle for me. But if I look at it with no expectations, like I just want to share my gift. I want to give this value to these people who see value in what I am offering then every time I've gone in with no expectations, not even low expectations, but nothing at all, just, I just want to share this value. I want to give my gift. It's blown what my expectations would have been out of the water completely. And I feel like that's helped me a lot. And again, kind of just removing myself and my feelings from the situation and just be like, this is my gift that I was given to help other people feel confident. And like, I'm literally just... I'm just there to help give value and share that magic and having no expectations has just been a game changer for me as far as excitement level or, you know, feeling let down or feeling disappointed so I can manage that and, you know, not feel disappointed as much as humanly possible with going in with no expectations. So I have a question for you. So in your, in the way that you run your business, I always find that I do what you're doing, but I feel like I have been told by other business owners and entrepreneurs, like you need to set rigid goals and you need to be tracking your, you know, objectives and key results. Like how do you balance that? What is your approach to that? Because to me, that doesn't come naturally. To me, coming what comes naturally is letting it go with the flow when I feel like I need to be so rigid and um, more rigid than I am and have these systems and processes and which I are re- really good, really valuable. But for somebody that's coming from corporate um, to running your own business, like, where do you draw that line? What does that look like for you? That is a really good question because I feel like I've heard all those same things from coaches, from courses that I've taken is like, have your numbers, have your stuff. Like I worked at Sephora and 
they had very rigid numbers of you need to do this many sales today. This is how much we want to come in. Like we need to reach this by X, Y, Z. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. Got this. (laughs) But like, I can't put that on myself because I don't work that way at all, at all, at all. I feel like my assistant, I always come in. I'm like, okay, I'm crazy brain again today, which is every single day. But I come in and I'm like, I need to be this fluid, creative, like in my mind, crazy person that just gets to do all the fun stuff and like be my magical self and do the things that light me up. And then she's the one that can be like, okay, these are our goals. (laughs) Like, here's what we're going with. And of course I have like loose goals. Like, okay, I want to grow by 10% of whatever my following is each month on Instagram. I want to, you know, coach 10 people per month, or I look at those things, but I'm not super rigid about it because if I hit nine people per month, I'm like, I was able to help and pour into nine people. Of course, it would have been amazing to have one more, but that's just one of those things that it doesn't, I look at it like, first of all, I can't control that. I've done everything that I've been able to, to reach 10 people to come in. And if nine come in, I still have to focus on how amazing is it that I got nine people who want to come and work with me one-on-one. And it doesn't do me any good to sit there and be like, well, I didn't reach my 10 people. And now I'm going to be frustrated about it for a day. I'm wasting my time being frustrated about it when I could just be super excited that I'm working with nine people. And so I look at these things and that's something that I learned from my dad. And I really appreciate that I took after him in this sense because he, I can't remember how old I was or what the situation was, but he asked me, he said, can you control this? And I said, well, no. And he said, so what does it do you any good sitting here worrying about it? What can you control about the situation? You can control your feelings. You can control your actions. You can control what you do next. And that's what you should focus on. But if you're sitting here worrying or being frustrated about it, you're sitting in a rocking chair and you're not getting anywhere. And that really just, it almost allowed me to release that stress and that perception or that what I thought I needed to do. And when you think about it, we are the only ones who are putting expectations on ourselves. And I feel like for me, I had to throw all of that away. And once I threw all of that away, I started to do way bigger months, way bigger numbers, helping more people. And again, relating it back to social media, I thought I had to have a perfect feed (laughs) and I thought it had to be like perfectly curated and that was an expectation I put on myself because that's what I saw other people doing and I had to be like, you know what, I'm holding myself back from sharing valuable pieces of content because I don't think it's going to look pretty and once I started not caring, I was able to share one, two, three pieces of content a day and get twice as many new people finding my page, twice as many messages, and so many more clicks to my website and purchases because I was sharing value. And that was my goal. If I can help people, if I can bring value to them through one piece of content, or I can help them feel more confident, or I can give them a little tip that's going to change their business in a big way... I'm going to do that and not worry about the perfect feed and not worry about those things because those expectations I put on myself are holding me back. And so instead of looking at the way other people do things, which I still do, and I still, I have two different coaches I'm working with. I'm constantly buying master classes and courses that I can learn from, but ultimately what works for me is I need to find my own path. I need to find what works for me as a person, me as a business owner. And if that means taking a little bit of information from different people, but not doing things, you know, blueprint step by step the way that they've done, then I need to make my own path because it's not going to work for me being who I am doing something the way somebody else is doing something with who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes like the number thing can be a little bit touch and go because it can if you tie yourself to it then it can feel like a lack mentality like you're um desperate 
for that and people can sense like I just need that one more person versus like coming at it with love. I have like a collective that I'm in where she's doing another one-on-one program like a three-month coaching program and she was like I have one more slot I'm calling in like the right person for that I appreciate that mentality versus the like I'm sitting at home with like hopeful crossing my fingers like what does it mean about me it's again the external validation like you are good in yourself and you are happy and abundant and who knows like what's going to fill the time or the money whatever you're lacking of that slot. And I like what you said about like, you know, we're the only ones tying ourselves to that, those numbers. Like when I come up with goals for myself, it's like, oh, that's just me making that up. All my deadlines are arbitrary because I'm so deadline driven. (laughs) And I'm like, this is for me. I even email clients where I'm like, does this work for you as a deadline? You just need to say yes or no, because that's what I'm like, how I'm prioritizing my list so that I can show up for you and um I just love the way that you're thinking about your business obviously but I am curious about like how did you even decide to do courses like where did you get the inspiration to do that well when the pandemic hit and we had to close I first of all was like, sweet, we're going to have two weeks off. (laughs) Like, this sounds amazing. (laughs) Like, I really need a break. And then when it wasn't just two weeks, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to figure some stuff out because apparently it's really easy to go through savings and it's really easy to have bills stack up really quickly (laughs) when you're not working. And that's when I really started to realize I don't want to trade my time for money anymore. And I decided to make my first online course then. And I had, and it was really, I feel like I have been so lucky. Lashes fell in my lap. Training fell in my lap because someone asked me if I was a trainer or if I was interested in training. And I said, sure, why not? Like, will you be my guinea pig? I'm going to figure it out. And someone, I think someone was in the UK and they were like, I really like the way you do your sets. You look like you can fan so effortlessly. Like, do you have any online courses? Like no one's traveling right now. No one's doing anything like this. And I was like, Hmm, maybe I should do online courses. And so it really has been. So when I think it was the end of March, 2020 is when I released my first online course and I had a decent amount of sales. I was like, wait a minute. Okay, this is really cool. It did a lot better than I thought it was going to. It was just a low ticket price because I really didn't know what it would be like to market and sell an online course. And then after that, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I can create these courses one time and sell them multiple times. And I can open and close enrollment. And this is something that I can, if there's any more information to add, I can easily film something and then add it to the course and have that be kind of that added value of once you're in, you're in, you get lifetime access and you're going to get any new updated information. And so it was really cool for me to realize first there was a need for it. And secondly, it was what I wanted to create in my business. And I just didn't know how to create that more, you know, kind of passive income. And so that was the first one. And then I didn't create a second course or update that course until summer of 2021. And then I got insanely crazy excited about everything. And I created nine courses (laughs) and I sold them all separately. And then I decided to do a big bundle with all of the courses. And so it became really, really fun and just getting feedback from people. And I think I've been so receptive to all the feedback because of all the experiences I've had before with clients or with trainings and things like that to be able to be like, okay, again, taking myself out of the situation. If I can give as much value as possible, I'm going to ask for feedback. I want them to be honest with me. And if there's anything else they think should have been added in there, I can easily be like, you know what? I'm going to add that (laughs) because if this is something that I just wanted, again, everyone to get value from it and feel like they could have their light bulb moment, maybe with one line that I said, or maybe like a chapter or one module that really made a difference for them. 
And so that's kind of how the online courses started. And that's something I'm working on heavily in the future to create more for people outside of the lash world, kind of more talking about the social media and really just mindset. I feel like mindset I'm so into right now because it has helped me and changed my life completely. How do you feel about the idea? I've heard this a few times and I don't know how I feel about it or like which where I land on it of creating courses because you and I are similar in that we are taking courses (laughs) of um, asking people what you should teach versus I'm going to teach what I feel like people need to learn and then get feedback like you've been saying. But I, I feel like some people go out there like asking what should I teach and then try to give the people what they want when really like you know in your soul like I'm going to start here and then we can go wherever but um I know Kim Kardashian too like she would perfume would make a new perfume and then whether it's like real or pretend she would be like give me feedback on the bottle so I kind of I think I I'm on the path of like I do what I want and then I like ask for some feedback after but like the idea is mine unless somebody's in your DMs like, oh, you have you done this? Do you have any courses? But I'm not like out there soliciting what should I do next and really like needing that from people. I feel like I have a two part answer to this question because I've done both. I feel like to your point of like, you should be teaching what you want to teach. You should be teaching what lights your soul on fire, what you're the expert in, what people come to you for. But also on the flip side of that, there's been times where I've hopped on my Instagram stories and said like, what online courses do you guys want to see? And all of a sudden now I have all these ideas of possible online courses that I could do. Someone could write on there and say, like, teach me how to do QuickBooks. No, thank you. Not my jam. (laughs) But if someone goes on there and says, like, how do you price your services? I'm like, oh, my gosh, I never would have thought to add this. But I love talking about how to price your services and how to look at, like, really what your profit margins are. And it was something that never popped into my mind because I always looked at it like, oh, my audience knows how to price their services. They're fine. And then like something as simple as like, I don't know how to set up my Instagram bio. And that was something that prompted me to make my free bio guide, which has got, has funneled so many people to my online learning platform. That's helped them now like sign up for the bigger ticket courses because they had that free value. So I think it's good to like survey your audience Because your stories are the people who are most engaged with you and they're going to be honest. (laughs) And if you can get like ideas of things that you would actually like to talk about, I think that's a great tool, but also take that with a grain of salt. You don't have to teach QuickBooks just because one person said they want to learn QuickBooks from you, but you could also flip that around and say, you know what? I do know somebody who has a great QuickBooks course. Like, let me tag her, let me send you her way, because you're still adding value to that person instead of trying for me to try and pretend that I'm an expert in QuickBooks and that I can help them do that. I'm like, no, let me send you to my CPA. Let me send you to my bookkeeper. Let me send you to my friend who's coming out with the course all about how to do your own QuickBooks as a solo entrepreneur, lash artist. And so I think it's great to survey, but ultimately, I think you're right, Whitney, like, you know, in your soul, what you want to teach, and you know, what you're going to be most excited about, because people can feel that energy, there will be times where my assistant is just filming for us. And we're in the we're in the office filming. And like, there are days where I'm like, this is the subject I'm super excited to talk about and other times she's like okay we need a little more energy girl come on let's go like I know we're talking about adhesive and ingredients but you still got to make it exciting for this person and so I feel like again just keeping people's attention and learning how to do that if it's something that lights you on fire it's gonna be a lot easier for you to talk about and keep them engaged then if it's not something that you're super stoked on and that just might be something that you're like you know what This is where I can pass you off. This is where I can make that connection. And you're still adding value that way because then they're going to come to you for more things when they have questions. And you're just going to be able to make those connections and just build your community that way. 
Something you said earlier about you have nine people to pour into. Um, just that verbiage versus nine people are draining me is beautiful. And like, I always think like, I, I kind of have a negative mindset this way that I'm, I'm realizing that when people come to me for stuff that I don't do, I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. But like, I, I try to, I try to send them elsewhere, but I think it's really beautiful that you're highlighting, well, you're actually adding value to that person, whether or not you can really specifically one-on-one -on -one help them or not, because you're still helping them get to where they need to be. And I am adopting that mindset now. I'm pouring into people. They're not draining me because this has been such, Whitney, I think you know that about me. I'm like, oh, nope, that's draining. Like, no, no thanks. That takes time. Like, I don't have that time, but if I'm really adding value to people, that is what is important to me too. So thank you for like shifting that for me in this few minutes that we've been talking. So. No, I love that. And I feel like that's something I had to unlearn too, because I looked at everything like that. Like when I did start to realize, like, I don't want to trade my time for money and I don't want to do all this. I started looking at the things that were draining my time, were draining my energy. I'm like, I need to cut all of this off completely. And I ha I wake up to 40 to 100 DMs every day. And that is so draining of my time, but it is something that is important to me. And I started to look at it differently. Like, okay, it might take me a week to get back to this person, but if I can still go in there and share encouragement or hop on and give a little voice message, I know how much that meant to me when I reached out to people with big followings and I wasn't expecting a response and they hopped on and said something and that stuck with me. And I think it came back down to like, I don't ever want anyone to feel negatively towards me. <laughs> and I know that's a huge expectation I put on myself, but there's been situations where I've met someone for the first time that they had this huge following and they looked like this like amazing, super nice person, whatever. And they were so rude. And I just remember feeling like, oh, like I don't ever want to make anyone feel that way. If I get to the point where, you know, I have people that know who I am and I don't know who they are. Like, I don't ever want to make someone feel less than for just existing and wanting to say hi. And so I started to look at it like, okay, I can take the time to do this. And I think I'm going to start having my assistant kind of help me manage those DMs because it is overwhelming. It is a lot of time when I could be doing other things. And I started to look at it in the way of, okay, if I'm giving them like free info right now, just on this quick little question, they might be more inclined to maybe a month from now, two months, three months from now, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me or sign up for one of my courses. And the long game is more important to me and the connections are more important to me because they might be some huge superstar in a year from now and I might collab with them or do something with them. And so I started to just kind of look at it that way. And it really helped me be less frustrated in my day to day. I love that mentality too, because nobody like they're coming there because they love you. And for you to just, it, it, everybody has their own threshold of like how much they can take on from other people's energy. But like, this is exactly what they're coming to you for and why you put out the information. So then figuring out how to manage your energy and time around it is this whole other layer that a lot of people aren't prepared for, especially if you're more introverted like me, but I'm like extroverted on the lines. Like I'm happy to get back to people, but I can also see myself getting so overwhelmed by feeling like people need something from me that it, it would be this balance. I love the idea of having your assistant do it too. And if you do need to get a new assistant sometime, I know you want an in-person one, but Emily, um, that's whole, her whole business. And I had all these ideas about how Emily's, I always have all these ideas for other people, but I'm like, Emily's VAs could each have like little sections within her courses too of like these things that they're awesome at. That would be really cool to learn about. And anyway, something to consider. We do our non-rapid rapid fires at the end of all of our conversations. And I want to ask you 
these questions that really say a lot about you. Um, what are you proudest of in your business right now? Ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so many things. I feel like I'm most proud of, honestly, the c- connections that I've made. I, it was something that I never really looked at or was excited about, but I've made connections with so many people through social media or meeting at trade shows, literally from all around the United States. And I feel like that was never something that was super important to me, but it's so important to me now to have those genuine connections with people. And even just the connections with my team that you know, kind of taking a step back and realizing like, these are people, (laughs) these are humans with feelings instead of looking at it like a business or looking at it like, okay, well, how much money are you making me this month? Like I have really tried to pour into the relationships that we have because it's really important to me. And I think that's honestly what I'm most proud of because we don't do fake friends. (laughs) And I feel like everyone that I've starting to surround myself with are real genuine people and just open and open-minded and people who want to learn and I just love I think that's just what I'm most proud of because I'm I've been able to surround myself with and meet people who are on that same journey of self-growth self-love and expansion and it's it's been an incredible ride yeah and it really is it it's fun but it's hard it's a lot of work to constantly like reframe your own brain so i love i love the support of others it's like a gym buddy but for your mindset mm-hmm. yes exactly <laughs> tell us about a book you read or a podcast you listened to recently that changed the way you're thinking about your life or your business and i imagine you have a lot Oh my gosh. I'm constantly reading books, but it's actually, if I had to pick one, it would be a podcast that I just listened to. Um, it's called the Ed Milet show. And I cannot remember the name of the guy who he was interviewing, but I just ordered his book and he was talking about the power of regret and how having regrets, like you can learn from them. And he was saying that there's two different types of regrets. There's an at least and there's an only if. And he put it in the example of if you place bronze in the Olympics, at least you placed bronze. At least you weren't fourth and at least you get to walk away with the medal. But if you come in second, if only I worked harder, if only I did this other thing and it's a different kind of thing. And so looking at the if only regrets that you have in your life And think about how can I grow from this and how can I change my mindset? How can I do things differently? What can I learn from this situation? And so for me, I feel like it's really important to look back on regrets, whether they're small or big or whatever that looks like, and just really learn from them. And I think too, just remembering we have one life. We have one chance to live this human experience and I'm going to do everything I can to learn and grow myself my business, my relationships around me. And if I have to look back at the regrets and realize, okay, I need to do things differently or I need to change something or I need to change my mindset. So that was really expansive for me to listen to and hear about that instead of looking back and ruminating on the regrets with no learning from it and no action plan of like, okay, how can I, how can I learn from this? Instead of just being like, oh, if only I did this because that doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. I'm a bad self-judger versus, like, the way that I treat the rest of the world. I judge myself a lot more harshly than I'd like to. So, I, of course, I add everything to my list. I'm like, going to listen to that, going to get the book. What would your mm-hmm. last meal be? Spaghetti and meatballs and garlic bread. Yum. That's, so that I don't actually, know why. It's I think just somebody my else said that. Somebody that, else said that, right? I don't remember somebody else saying that, but that was my meal when I would come home from school, from college. I would show up at home, and that's what my dad would make me. It was either that or salmon, but usually spaghetti. And, like, not to be dark, but, like, now I don't really eat spaghetti as much because it was, like, our thing. So um, I have a very warm place in my heart for spaghetti and um, 
we did more like ground meat versus the mm-hmm. balls because I feel like balls are really hard to achieve. <laughs> you have to give right? me a good ball yeah. recipe because I'm like <laughs> I don't know. Um, and the garlic bread that's clutch too. Always. What's the best business purchase you've made in the last six months under a hundred dollars? People struggle with the hundred dollars. Hmm. Best business purchase. Honestly, this is going to sound so funny and it's going to only make sense for me, but a phone tripod to film my reels. Like that was the best purchase ever. I, and I think it was like 25 bucks. And instead of, because I would always just prop my phone up somewhere or I'd hold it awkwardly. And once I got the tripod, I ordered a second one. So technically both of them combined still under a hundred dollars, but I keep one at work and one at home. So when I'm doing like lives at home or if I'm hopping on a call at home and I'm doing something with my phone, it just made it super easy. But yeah, just honestly, a simple phone tripod from Amazon. And I'd like, too, that, like, you were abundant in that, where you're like, I'm not going to try to remember to bring this back and forth. I'm just going to get two. I do that with, like, my daughter's hairbrushes. I'm like, I just need, like, a thousand hairbrushes so that I'm not running, like, where did I put the hairbrush to chase her crazy mane? So I've been trying to be more about that. Or it's little moments of abundance like that where you're like, you know what? I'm going to use this a lot, so I'm going to get two. Love it. And you've spoken a lot to this, so I love asking this question, especially to you. Last question. What is lighting you up lately? Um, I'm going to go back and just say pouring into other people. I feel like that's really lit me up in the sense of being able to share my magic and have someone's light bulb moment go off of them being like, wait a minute, I can do the same thing and I can go share my magic and be this badass person that I want to be and this person that I want to become. And I think that's really helped me. I heard someone say, become your favorite version of yourself. Because if you want to become the best version of yourself, you're going to be striving for that forever. But if you can become your favorite person, a version of yourself, you give that person grace and you're kinder to that person. And I feel like being able to give that to other people too, I feel like that can be really fun. Thank you so much for being here today. What? So before, before you leave us, how can people find you? I pretty much hang out exclusively on Instagram. <laughs> My handle is at Maclash Mob. And so it was kind of a funny marriage between the Maclash Studio and then the Lash Mob little like online course learning space of things. But um yeah, pretty much just on Instagram and all my links and everything are on my Instagram, how people can text me, how they can email me, slide into one of my 40 to 100 DMs a day, <laughs> whatever that looks like, but yeah. I just love your cool like I feel like such an old mom saying this right now, but like your cool new marketing like that people can text you from your Instagram. It like feels so personal. I know, right? Well, and it is nice because it's not my actual phone number. It's this whole system. So that is another thing that kind of helped me separate that to be able to be like, okay, I have time to pour into my text marketing right now. And it was funny. I I used to do this thing called Motivation Mac and I would talk once a week, twice a week about whatever book I was reading on stories. And this was like five years ago. And everyone's like, where's Motivation Mac? We want her back. So I kind of want to like bring that into it. And so one of the sections in my text marketing um, is all about books. And so I literally send out a picture of something that I've highlighted in one of the books that I've read once a week, twice a week. And I get so many responses about how much people like that. So I'm like, okay, I need to bring this to the feed. I need to bring this back because it is so helpful to me. And I love when we can connect about like books or podcasts or something that I've heard or something that they've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your little like names that you come up with for everything, they're so like the, what are they? The Ari, Ariana Grande monsters or whatever and like the believers you like have that in now yes, in multiple different ways like motivation mac yes <laughs> I love it I, I, and it's funny because again I feel like that was something that just like fell into it 
Whitney and I were just talking about this, like, the other day, trying to name our thing. And I'm like, what about, like, Mac? Like, she's, you know, flash mob. I'm like, yeah, or Rihanna. I can, I compared you to Rihanna. <laughs> you are Rihanna. Oh, my gosh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. We were like, the Coast Colt? Can we be that? Ooh, we love yes. Colts. We I love, love that. Colts. We do love Colts. Stay tuned so. for our Colt release. And then that's a perfect example of attracting the right people and repelling the ones who don't get it. Mm-hmm. You want to have that cult like following, you want to have that cult like fan base. So why not just make one? <laughs> we're starting a cult. Well, awesome. You heard Thank it here you first. so much for your time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the first member. Yes. Thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to be connected with you guys. And I feel so like, uh, just so excited to know you. So thank you again for having me. Thank you for being here. We love Bye everyone. Bye. See you next week. Another awkward outro <laughs> by Emily and Whitney. Peace. This episode's music was provided by Sloan Best. And editing provided by Kayla Shoup.